Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Rajesh Mulugalu. I'm part of the Enterprise Data Services team at Ashurian. And today, I'm really, really excited to share our journey with Airflow and how we scaled and simplified it uh, at for, to, to make it work for our petabyte scale um, data platform. So before we get to the actual content, a few slides to let you know who we are. So Ashurian is a tech care company. And we work. Uh, we offer like protection and insurance plans, repair and replacement services, and setup and installation for all of your uh, phones, connected home tax, major appliances. So if you are buying any phone from Verizon, most likely we are providing the extended warranty. And if you are uh, buying a product on Amazon, you would see that okay, do you need the extended warranty that's coming from uh, most likely from insurance? <clears throat> we care for people and their tax whenever, wherever, and however. And we support to over 300 uh, million customers worldwide. We have a global presence. We operate in 17 countries and then we have over 90,000 employees. We also have 10,000 plus experts who are available on virtual, uh, virtually in stores um, and also on the road. And over the period we have built like long term partnerships with a um, uh, ton of partners both in the mobile and in the retail space as you can see on this slide. With that being said, Back to the topic, or the, the topic that we are discussing. Why do we need a robust work, workload orchestration solution? Can anybody answer the question? So, I, and with, with the Gen AI space and all of that, right? Data is no longer on the back seat; it's, it's actually on the forefront of everything, right? So there's nobody who would not know about why data is important, and the data is at the heart of everything. If you need your AI to work, data needs to work. And if you need your data to be working, you need, uh, and if you if you are envisioning a future where it is driven by data, then workload orchestration is at the heart of it. That's what at least Assurian, we, we within Assurian, based on our experience, that's what we have um, concluded. So the workload orchestration is at the heart of our data platform, which is founded on data. And what magnifies or amplifies this one is the need for thousands of these jobs that need to be processing billions of records and uh, billions of records per day and with utmost precision. Because if one of these drops a ball, it Im immediately translates to a massive snowball down, down the line and then some of your businesses or maybe one or more of your businesses will not be able to make a very good or accurate data-driven decision that day or for that moment, okay? So that is what the result is. So that's what is the gravity of the problem. So what's the solution? Archive is our solution, which is Assurance flavor of Assur uh, Apache Airflow, which is at the heart of our data platform. And we have seen and we have scaled it uh, to be reliable, accurate, stable, and resilient. And it is at, uh, as a linchpin of our data-driven future, which is what we are all working towards at issue. We have a couple of thousand DAGs, which are running about a couple of million job runs every year, and our availability is about 99.5%. That means we get to take, I mean, our aim is three ninths of availability, which is like probably eight hours of outage for the entire year, unplanned outage. But right now we are covering about 30 to 40 hours of outage unplanned for an entire year. So that's where we are. So, how, how was the solution approach? Principles. So we started with a couple of founding principles and then we evolved some, uh, to some of these principles over the period of time based on our testing and then uh, years of working in that space. So we will go through these and see uh, which ones, how did we end up with these principles. The first one is separation of concerns, which is nothing but like single responsibility principle. So we fundamentally believe the data management code or integration and workload orchestration, they need to be separate. You can do pretty much everything, data management, data integration, everything in, in a single tool, can, but when you are aiming too high and when your margin of error is too low, you would want to focus. So in this case, we chose to focus on the work, uh, workload orchestration piece. That means Airflow or any other tool in that space within our, uh, in that region, in, in our enterprise workload orchestration is single responsibility is to do workload orchestration. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. Orchestrate the job, be done with it. Everything about data integration or data management stays outside of the responsibility of our workload orchestration. That's a separation of concerns. 
second thing metadata of course so whether you have a workload orchestration tool or not the jobs exist the relationship between jobs exist the job has to load data to a couple of tables or more tables and these dags or if you are calling a group of jobs as a dag they need to be related to each other that dag1 finishes and then it triggers dag2 and then these two trigger dag3 that exists irrespective of whether airflow exists or whether some other orchestration tool exists or not so that is how we treat it that data and that metadata all of that should be outside of our workload orchestration that means your workload workload orchestration tool in this case airflow should not be the source of truth for your jobs your etl code your data integration code or your relationship between jobs and your dag relation table so we treat the workload orchestration tool as a transient tool today it might be airflow tomorrow it might be something else that we can simply plug in and let it orchestrate our job so that's our principle about metadata flow so we have and we start with metadata and all of the information about your job configs metrics relations everything sits outside of our workload orchestration so we took those founding principles and then what did we do we iterated we we experimented over actually 250 days um this was back in 2019 or 18 probably where um uh, we had like a couple of thousand dags and then we created like massive 700 job concurrency and then we kept iterating over it that means it is simply because now it's not actually doing any workload or sorry it's not doing actually any data integration all it's doing is it is triggering something else waiting for it to finish get back and that something else is an api gateway that sleeps for 30 minutes that's all right so we we were pretty easily able to spoof or simulate this whole thing and then build this massive infrastructure where it ran we clocked over 5 and 5.5 million job runs over 250 days and then we learned it now what did we learn we learned about the sizing of the worker nodes the concurrency that each of these worker nodes can take when do they start to give up and which metrics do you pay attention to if you want to really auto scale right do you pay attention to the cpu do you pay attention to the memory do you pay attention to the backlog of your rabbit mq all of these maybe a combination of right those are the lessons that you learn and then <clears throat> the evolved principle so we started like everybody else we started with a bunch of operators right you have an operator for every single thing but then we quickly realized that we are actually wasting or i would say spending too much time in managing these many operators maintaining them dependencies and then versions and so on and so forth so if our goal is to to take you back to those three nines of availability and to be uh, we have little room for error we do not again going back to the single responsibility and focus we want to focus on one thing so we will support one operator which is universal operator that so that way we get to focus all of our energy on making this platform up and running and keeping it up and running rather than chasing each and every new operator so what we said to our data in integration uh, uh, data integration job creators or our data engineers is like if you can put your code into a container and if you can make it work we will orchestrate that no uh, if it works there it works here simple as that right so it gives you two benefits one is stability you would you would you would uh, always focus on getting your workload orchestration going and then scaling okay and you will also uh, the second thing is you will be able to predict your workload and you will be able to scale pretty linearly so a job 1 might be processing only 100 records job 2 might be processing or a dag 2 <coughs> excuse me might be processing a billion records in this case airflow from the perspective of airflow infrastructure both of the jobs are exactly the same because all this airflow is doing is it is orchestrating the job and then waiting for it to finish and reporting the status that's all nothing more nothing less so the infrastructure where those jobs are running is outside of airflow and then you add 10000 of jobs you can linearly scale or if you just process 100 you can linearly scale down right so everything becomes seamless and pretty straightforward when you take out the data management piece out of the game so that's what we went with uh, why we went with a single operator and then shared nothing infrastructure we started with a uh, shared infrastructure that means we had efs at the heart of all of our services so they are all communicating with each other via efs that means the dag files are sitting in the efs the plugins the custom plugins that we built are sitting in the efs 
and for the first few hundred DAGs, it works pretty well, right? The moment you hit 200 to 300 DAGs and you go beyond 300 DAGs, your EFS will quickly become your bottleneck. So what we see you see is a lot of file not found error. The DAG file exists, but it'll come back and say, oh, I didn't find the file. Or you go back and see, then you will see some very un unexpected and un unstable behavior from EFS. And you will be quickly chasing the throughput of EFS. And no matter how much throughput you give, it's not enough. Because it's not meant for that purpose. But we are using that for the purpose. So it won't work. So what we quickly learn from that is, each of these services deserve their own shared, uh, sorry, deserve their own storage and compute. So then we <coughs> we separated everything. That means each of these services will have its own storage and compute. But we are introducing another problem: problem of consistency. Now you each of these services has their own storage. That means they can have a different version of the DAG. They can have a different version of the plugin. So now you are taking uh, the responsibility of keeping all of these. Work, sorry, all of these services and their storage in sync. So we use L sync and then a couple of other uh, algorithms, sorry, frameworks to keep it in sync. And then we 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 hit a couple of roadblocks, but we figured that out. So right now it is working pretty well. Within a few milliseconds of making a change in one place, all of the uh, files, DAG files, or plugins, or code files, everything gets reflected across the board. So we don't have that problem anymore. So we solved that and we said, okay, shared nothing infrastructure is the way to go. So everything put together in terms of architecture, this is what uh, our current latest architecture is. It is uh, Orca 3.0. So we have uh, dedicated uh, resources to each of the services. So you have a couple of the services we put on auto scaling groups like the scheduler and the queue. And uh, we have a code sync process, which is continuously scanning for changes and then it pushes the code, meaning DAG files and the plugins to all of these nodes. All right. So, what are the other evolved principles that we, <coughs> that we uh, learned or we evolved into? Metadata rich. So, we started with metadata first. Metadata first is treating metadata as a first-class citizen and not obviously thinking about it as an afterthought, right? But, but what is metadata rich? That means being as comprehensive as you can with metadata. So, we collect a ton of metadata at every point of interaction within the DAG, right from the DAG deployment to the DAG. At the running time, at the job, job start, job end, task, not the ones that airflow is generating, but we collect even more than what airflow is generating. So we collect a lot of information and all of that is emitted in real time to our monitoring and observability tools. It can be um, it can be like Rapana or it can be Duralix, right? You can be um, Big Panda or you can pick whatever uh, observability tools you want, but we collect all of that and we act on them in real time. So <coughs> like pretty much seamlessly transitions to automation. So what can you do to going back to keeping up that three nines of availability? You need to be able to quickly recover. You cannot guarantee that you will always be up and running, but you should be able to resilient, you should be able to be quickly recover when you hit an error, right? So all a lot of automation um, is behind that. So whatever the comprehensive metadata that we're collecting, we act upon. So monitoring and recovery is mostly automated. Instant management, so it hits an error, an instant gets created, then it automatically recovers, then instant gets closed with uh, whatever has been done, either it is automated or manual, all of that is automated. Code generation and deployment, completely automated. So none of our DAGs, not a single DAG of the 2000 DAGs is human authored. The only thing that our data engineers author are JSON files, that's all, because we want to be bug free for, for the most part. So all of our data engineers are going to fill out a couple of key value pairs in a JSON document and they upload the JSON. That is what creates a DAG file. And while the process of the creation of the DAG file, we introduce a lot of other wrapper code around it. That is using, that is what is actually emitting a lot of events. It does a ton of validation, so on and so forth. So that is the, about the code generation and the deployment. So you, you might want to deploy a single DAG, or you might want to deploy 300 of them. And we do, sometimes when we are uh, introducing new areas of business, we end up adding hundreds of uh, DAGs. And we don't want our users to do click and click and deploy one at a time. So we can actually 
bulk deploy all of those 300 JSON clones to head and then system the API free. That's uh, the principle about automation. So here are a few snapshots of uh, user accelerators that we created. These are all custom plugins not available in your uh, vanilla Airflow. So this screen, for example, it has a, uh, you have a two file, you can upload your JSON there, you can visualize what that, if you created a, what it would look like, so that you can see that the relationships are pretty much how you want, the dependencies are pretty much how you want, and then when you're ready, you can publish it. So during the publishing, it does a ton of things. First it does is metadata validation. You recall, like we said, all of the metadata about our jobs and everything sits outside of Airflow. Right, that means the data engineers who are the most, uh, who are the experts about those jobs, that is the, the metadata about those jobs stays close with them. So we connect to their metadata backends and then we validate. Okay, you are saying you are deploying a DAG where you are triggering job A, job B, and job C. Do they even exist? How do you know? Right? So we connect to the metadata, validate that these jobs exist. We also make sure that these jobs are not part of other DAGs. We also make sure that these jobs are not creating a circular dependency, so on and so forth. So there are so many other validations that we do on the fly, and then we fail the deployment if it doesn't go. And then we register all of this metadata. We emit the events that this person has created this DAG, they registered this job, and these are the dependencies. Everything is emitted in real time. And then we also add the wrapper code to emit those events during the runtime. So that is also part of our orchestration code. And then the DAG file gets created and events get created. And then a couple of other accelerators like you can disable a task. You have 10 tasks in a DAG, but you want temporarily to disable one. It won't be, you don't need to redeploy the DAG. We update the flag in the metadata and during runtime it gets changed. So you can delete the DAG and so on and so forth, right? And then you can also look at uh, what is the DAG version, you deployed it, DAG pointers, if you want to manage the pointers and then upstream down some dependencies. And then queues, like if you are, uh, if you have a ton of queues like we do, then uh, we want also to bring that information that these are the how many jobs running and how many are waiting to our to our actual data engineers. So we brought all of that information and displayed right here. So this is the team who I wish and allowed to be here and share their story with you. Uh, maybe next time, who has uh, these guys did a great job in putting all of this together and share all these lessons with you. And then uh, quick summary principles and lessons learned, we went through separation of concerns, metadata first, universal operator, shared nothing infrastructure, metadata rich, and automation. With that, open for questions. Cool, thank you. Thanks for this.